In this example, we will be talking about structured expressions and dynamic legends and explain why one structured expression is better than another within Cameo. So with that, we'll get started. For this example, our system of interest is the bike that you see here with the bike components that are called out. We then decompose that bike into assemblies and then the components which were called out on the previous page. So you can see that we added a dynamic legend that is working as anticipated and highlighting all the bike components in blue. And we also have created two other legends which do the same thing. But to understand which one should be used for this example, we need to dive into how each of the structured expressions were created and what their weaknesses are. For example one, what we're doing is the block owner name string linkage. So if we've got this seat block, for example, we would be looking for the owner, the owning package of this seat block. And if that owning package's name is bike component, then it will flag it as blue. Otherwise, it will not flag it. To look at the actual structured expression for this, we can go down into the legend within the containment tree and click on the structured expression here. And then we can scroll down to body and language and look at it here. And we can see our property test. Um, so this is our original context, which is going to be all the blocks on the screen. We take that context, we look for all the blocks, and then we find the owner. And then we do a property test to make sure that the owner's name is by component. Um, additionally, you can get to this page by going to the uh, legend, scrolling down, and clicking on item one, and then going to elements by condition, and this is the same page that we were just looking at. Now we'll look at the weaknesses of this method. If seat is pulled into another block like that, and then you were to re-pull up the legend here, now seat is not there. It's not, it's not called out, even though it's still technically, it's the owning owner. It's like if I go into seat and I look at owner again, the owner is seat post. So it's not byte component. Um, additionally, another weakness is if I were to change this byte component package name, so, so it says bike ABC component, and then I were to close this and open it back up. Now, because this bike, compo bike ABC component has changed its name, now none of them are flagged. So this is completely dependent upon this bike ABC component package name remaining as just bike component. So it's fragile because of this name right here. It's also fragile because you can't nest blocks within blocks. So again, I'll pull it back up and now everything is fixed. Moving on to example two, we have the generalization linkage. So what we're doing here is we're not doing the owning package. We created these generalization links between all of our byte components to this abstract byte component block. And that's using the generalization relationship. So if we go click inside of our seat block again, you can see under general or all general classifiers or super class, which is what we did, that you can see byte component. Um, so we're, we're making sure that if the super class has a block with the name byte component, then it will flag it. It will make it purple. And if not, it will not make it purple. Now to look at the structured expression within the legend. So we scroll down to body language, look at the structured expression. We've got a filter on this one. We start with all elements from the diagram all blocks from the diagram, looking for the superclass, and then filtering out all of the all of the superclass blocks that have the name byte component. And that's the filter right there. And then we wrap that filter in a property test, which is going to be the same, just the, the name byte component. And the reason we have this additional property test is you need like a go, no go, like a Boolean property test in order for the um, dynamic legend to work. Now let's look at the strengths and weaknesses of this method. You can actually move seat wherever you would like in the containment tree. And we'll just close that and open it back up. 
and you can see it still has the adornment. Um, but the weakness here is we cannot change this bike component block. So bike ABC component. So if I and and you can see that it unhighlighted it there. Um, so if I change it back, it highlights it again. Obviously, because I can change, I can move this seat wherever. Changing this name is not going to matter. It's going to remain good to go. So that's nice. But again, it's fragile upon this bike component uh, block name. Now for the third dynamic legend, we used a special contains operation, which is saying as long as the blocks on this screen are contained within this scope, which was specified, then it will flag it. Otherwise, it will not flag it or turn it pink. Now to look at this last structured expression. Go into the body and language, and you can see we use this constraints operation. To get to that, we just go to behavior, and we actually have to have this UML standard profile as a project usage, and we see contains right here. We have a bunch of other options that we can use as well, so these are worth exploring. You can also look down here and see some other ones that, such as the property test, uh, find, if then else. Those are some good ones to look at, uh, and then you have some comparisons and many more. But uh, we use this contains relationship, and what we've done is we're saying all, all of the blocks within the scope of byte component package. So this is the byte component package, this is the block, and then this is the context, which would be all the elements within the diagram. Now for the strengths and weaknesses of this method. So this is kind of operating the way that we expect, and it is not dependent upon any name text at all. So I can change byte component to byte ABC component here. Um, I can nest seat within seat post here, and then I'll just show that it is still showing all the correct adornments. And it works as we intend, where if we pull the head tube out to a different location, it does not adorn that head tube because it is not within this bike ABC component. So this is why it's the best, is because it's not dependent upon the text of either a block or a package. So that's why we would push towards using this method.